Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's Living Life. A couple of years ago, uh, when I was in, this is during my time in Korea, I had the opportunity to go um, somewhere fun with a bunch of friends from church. And uh, it was a mix of like just Korean nationals, uh, kyopos, you know, expats like me, and then uh, foreign um, expats as well, like Caucasians and, and so forth. And I remember we went to some kind of island. I don't know the name of the region that we went to. Um, I think it's the Takalbi place. But um, we went somewhere and we got off a boat. We went to an island and we were kind of walking off the boat going. And I remember one kid, one Korean child, suddenly yelled out, pointed and yelled out towards our group, Wewok Saramida! Like, look, it's a foreigner, really loudly. And then one of my friends who uh, is a foreigner, a uh, Caucasian, w without missing a beat, he just suddenly reacted in kind of a similar way, pointed back to the little kid and said, oh, in Korean, 한국 사람이다, just right back to the kid. And you should have seen the, the look on the child's face. He was so shocked, right? Because first, he's shocked that he's seeing a foreigner, I don't know, I guess he doesn't see foreigners uh, very often. And then suddenly to have that foreigner yell back at him in Korean without missing a beat, he, the, the, he was just, his jaw dropped and it was one of the funniest moments, um, you know, that I can remember. Now, this is only about maybe six, seven years ago, and it shows how Korea is one of the most homogenous societies in the world. I mean, before it was called the Hermit Kingdom. But in the Kingdom of God, we're going to see that culture and race is really secondary because we are meant to be one as represented by the image of the olive tree in today's passage. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Romans chapter 11, verses 13 through 24. I am talking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may somehow arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in His kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree, that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Now this passage talks about the olive tree and, in, and it uses it as an illustration uh, to teach, you know, Paul. And talking, thinking about olive tree, it's, uh, it's actually the most widely cultivated fruit tree in the Mediterranean area. Now, for the rest of us who don't, you know, live there, haven't lived there or haven't even visited, the olive tree is something that's kind of very exotic or very foreign. And, you know, I, I actually just had to ask someone you know, do olives come from olive tree? Because I don't really know what it is. 
And even the, the olive is something that Koreans, you know, really eat, um, if at all, although I love olives, by the way. But um, yeah, I mean, the tree itself is not a very familiar tree to us. But in the Bible, it's something that comes up and is used as an illustration uh, very often. The Old Testament, in the Old Testament and Jewish writings, um, the, the country and the nation and the people of Israel is very often referred to and described as uh, to an olive tree in the book of Jeremiah, Hosea, and so forth. Now, in reading today's passage, notice that there is only one olive tree. Right? The images, uh, the illustration, there is only one olive tree. And I remembered um, a homework that I had to do when I was in Bible college, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 years ago. And um, the homework was to write like a one-page response uh, to a statement, uh, to a quotation or a statement. And, that, and it, it was that blood is thicker than water, but the spirit is thicker than blood. And what is your response? What does this mean to you? I think was the exact question. And, um, you know, I, I wrote a one page thing and um, it, it, it was passed. But the idea basically is that, you know, you know everyone knows that um, blood is thicker than water. As in relationships, family, the, the ties of family is much thicker than, you know, any other type of relationships uh, that exist. But over the top of that, for the people of God, the Spirit, as in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is a thicker bond than even that of family, right? A lot of people may, you know, with head knowledge agree to that, but at the same time, it isn't practiced completely. Now, um, I was with some people who, you know, did, were not Christians, did not go to church, and suddenly he stopped me and he said, Oh, you must go to church. You're, you know, and I said, well, yes, but you know, like I didn't know why this came up or how he kind of knew. And I said, oh, you know, why do you say that? How do you know? And he said, well, you just refer to someone as this. We were talking in Korean. You just refer to someone as 형제 and 자매, as in brother, sister. Right? So we don't do it so much in English unless you're part of a monastery or you know, convent. But um, you know, in Korean, in the church, we often call uh, each other by 형제 자매, right? We say brother, you know, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. And, -so. and I, I did that not knowing with someone who did not go to church at all. And he said, oh, you know, he must have heard it before. He said, you must be a Christian. You must go to church. Now, in the church, there is a reason that we do that. It's not just to follow tradition. Um, it is because we recognize that we are in the family of God, that in the kingdom of God, you know, someone who I just met is actually my brother and or my sister because we are both sons and daughters of God. Our identity as sons and daughters of God supersedes all other types of relationships. Now, we are at a time when um, the world is getting smaller. Multiculturalism, globalization is drawing us closer and closer together. And there are entire countries whose identity is rooted in diversity. You know, countries like Australia, you know, my country I call home, uh, even South Africa. And of course, there are, you know, problems that come with it. And Korea is actually now starting to become more and more diverse and multicultural. Um, as of March 2016, that's this year, um, uh, I, I read in the newspaper that we, there, there are 1.9 million foreigners in Korea. Now, this uh, statistic has been growing at a phenomenal rate, and it's something that Onuri Church um, is recognizing and is targeting. Pastor Lee, uh, he was just sharing a couple of weeks ago how he believes our church should be, you know, should grow to embrace um, the, the immigrant society, the cultures, and many people who come to work and to live in Korea who are not of Korean ethnicity. And um, our social uh, justice department even came up with a pr um, campaign a couple of years ago uh, called Loving You, with a capital U. Uh, and it, it has three arms or missions to, you know, as Christians that we need to be uncomfortable in loving, that we need to be uh, okay with unfamiliarity in loving, that we also even need to embrace, uh, you know, being unsafe when we want to love. And I think this is something that's really important 
to the church and to uh, the, the body, of, uh, body of Christ, that we need to be embracing. We need to be embracing to, of the unfamiliar, of the, even the unsafe uh, or uh, the uncomfortable uh, around us. And in doing so, we are actually becoming one to call someone who we don't know, a brother or sister, because of our relationship with Christ and their relationship in, with uh, Christ is something that will draw us together and something that we will talk about tomorrow as well. Race is a tool for humility, you know, for us to grow in humility that began at the Tower of Babel. God separated us so that we can really learn to become one. And this requires work, and it, this requires the gospel. Our acceptance of the sojourner, the foreigner, is to follow God's, in the first step of God's acceptance of us, and that is the teaching of the gospel. So we are all one tree. We are one olive tree. And we have been gathered to be one. And let me just repeat uh, what, how I ended uh, the earlier section. Our acceptance of the sojourner, the foreigner, is to follow in, God's, uh, in the first step of God's acceptance of us. And this is the heart of the gospel. So those who are saved, if we are saved, we need to be accepting. We need to be able to uh, be with people who are unfamiliar or even unsafe um, and to be able to love in that way as well. So I pray that through today's uh, passage and the devotional that we can broaden our horizons, that we have brothers and sisters all over the world, from all over the world, and, but we are at the same time one as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you that though we are many, we are one in Christ. We are one body in Christ. Not just one group, community, one church, uh, one institution, but we are indeed one body in Christ, with Christ as the head of that body. And I pray, Lord, um, that we will grow in our unity, that we will grow in our love, Lord, uh, every single day, no matter where we are, that there are so many people that we can love uh, through our um, discomfort, through even the fear of safety, uh, through many different ways. Help us to love, help us to grow in unity, even within our churches right now, no matter where we are. Help us to love and to grow as one body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 이 프로그램은 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 